Hello, and welcome to Rocks. I'm Jay. I'm your bartender in this program, and uh, I'd like to welcome you to this, the 88th episode of Rocks, J&B's Midlife Crisis. Now, you'll notice that I'm standing here alone at this undisclosed location here in western Montana, wandering around in a park, bereft of my comrade, B. He is, uh, that's him, you're seeing him on the screen there. He's the kind of longtime co-host, um, stalwart companion that uh, I've had for all these episodes that we've done of this program. But alas, things have changed. And uh, that's what this episode is about, J&B's Midlife Crisis. I moved to Montana about seven years ago. B moved to New Orleans, opposite ends of the continent, northwest, southeast. I'm, in, I'm surrounded in snow. He's probably basking in his underwear. And this pre presents a kind of a quandary, if you will, how to produce a television program when we're not even anywhere near each other, and yet we still want to do a program that is fundamentally, well, about us, because we're self-involved motherfuckers. Of course, it's hard for me to imagine doing a television program without B, even though he's not here, because of course, well, I need somebody to edit this shit. I sure am too lazy to do it myself. Of course, I also miss his companionship and all that shit, but I mean, what I really miss is somebody to videotape me. I'm having to do this myself. That's why it's all kind of, you know, tracking with my face so perfectly. We don't have these camera people trained or anything. It's just me. How am I supposed to cope? And so we've got this quandary, of which I've spoken. The fact that uh, we don't know how to make a TV show and co-host it when we're on opposite sides of the country. So we figured we'd try a few different techniques of hosting this program and uh, see if any of them actually work. All right, so I don't know what Jay's already told you. So welcome to Rocks this TV show. This is episode number 88, J and B's Midlife Crisis. And uh, I'm B, I'm your editor. As the editor, it's my job to chop up the video, chop, 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 and rearrange it, rearrange it, and try to make a logical, coherent narrative out of life, which is really not very logical or coherent. Like I said, this is Rock's episode number 88. We've actually made 88 of these things. J and B's midlife crisis. Because J is there in Montana. I'm B, I'm here in New Orleans. And thus, the crisis. When is midlife anyway? Let's break it down. Midlife would be the middle of life. The average life expectancy for the uh, American male is, I believe, 72 or 73, something like that. Half of 72 is 36. I'm 36. My God, my life is half over. If this is not midlife, then what is? Perfect time for a crisis. But what is a crisis anyway? It's a time of trouble, a time of danger. It comes from the Greek word crisis, which is derived from crinine or crinine, or I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Greek to me, but it means to separate. So think about that. A crisis is, is not just a time of trouble, it's also a turning point. It's the point at which it becomes clear whether the patient is going to live or die. You may have heard the expression, but that's not the expression. You may have heard the expression, the plural of crisis is crises, and maybe we should have called this J and B's midlife crises, because after all, there are numerous global crises going on right now. You know what I mean. So I'm gonna let you in on the particulars of my own personal crisis. I miss Jay. I miss Jay. I miss him. I miss his warm man love. Back when Jay and I used to live together, and back when we hosted the show together, when we lived in the same town, I was able to play the tortured creative genius to his good-natured buffoon, and I loved that. Here's a little clip from back in the old days that shows the kind of repartee that Jay and I used to share when we hosted this show. I just want to mention that my favorite garment in the entire world is crotchless underwear. G-A-R-M-E-N-T. C-R-O-T-C-H-L-E-S-S -S space. U-N-D-E-R-W-E-A-R. Is this getting any more in- Why? Why? I mean, come on. I loved that. Well, so hopefully you'll understand the quandary in which we find ourselves in, in trying to create a new TV show. Hence the title of this episode. JB's Midlife Crisis? That's where you're supposed to say the episode title, B. Say what? Yeah, that's that's it. Um, obviously, it's it's a little hard for us to communicate since uh, well, he's not over here, and I'm I am here, but I'm not here to him over there. K 
Can you explain what's going on? Yeah, here? basically, uh, see, Jay's in Montana, and I'm here in New Orleans. So we've both videotaped ourselves. Exactly. That's the, that. You took the words. Actually, I Not didn't have any speaking. words in my mouth. But if you had put some words in my mouth and then had taken them, those would have been among at least among the many words in my mouth. Um, so we're in in trying to produce this new series. Obviously, we have to search for commonalities and threads that we can both kind of riff on. Um, for example, uh, we both live in America today. Say what? Yeah, you were supposed to say something we have in common. Something we have in common. We both have large heads, but yours is much bigger than mine. That's true. We do. That's that's true also. However, I really wanted to address the fact that you know, living in America to get today, there's one thing that nobody can avoid. And that is um, this drumbeat of war that's pounding ever louder. Probably by the time you see this, we're already in a war. So I, this is being taped early in 2003. Who knows what's happening by the time you see this. But uh, anyway, um, it kind of makes life difficult. You know, everywhere you go, you hear about George Bush wanting to sodomize Saddam Hussein. And, you know, sodomy is a huge thing in New Orleans, isn't it, B? So are you going to let me get a word in edgewise? Here. Well, that's not what I. Say but anyway, any which way. You have no um, idea what I'm talking about. You can about, understand you why can't we want to address me. this issue. We both uh, have have recently attended some peace rallies. Uh, that uh, I went to one here in Missoula and in Seattle and. Yeah, yeah, I, I went to one in New yeah, Orleans. And uh, these kind of things are probably happening where you live. Um, and we thought that we'd share with you some of some of the scenes from the ones that we attended here. Hopefully, you'll enjoy. Them. Yeah. So here are some. Peace rounds. Hopping for peace. Hopping for peace. Hop, 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 hopping for peace. Hop, 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 hopping for peace. So we went to Seattle a little while ago. There was a peace rally there. It was just a little bit bigger than the one we see saw here today. We're going to show you a little bit of that now. There's a lot of people here, baby. Yeah. I think this is more people there are, than there are in Missoula. <laughs> Certainly more people than we ever see at one time in Missoula. <laughs> Except for maybe at a football game. Yeah. Good God damn, that's a lot of people. <laughs> Doughboy is against the war. Doesn't seem like a laughing matter, does it? <laughs> no, but the reason is that we think that you, people should be happy for working for peace. It's really a joyful thing, but it takes a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. That's not a real spine, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's important. Hey, all right. It's a beautiful march, isn't it? Beautiful. Yeah. And at 80 and 79, we've been marching for years. It's much bigger than I expected. We're letting Washington, D.C. and San Francisco know we're still here. <laughs> I think it's, we're not supposed to have war because the economy is pretty bad right now. Yeah. And I don't think this is a good time to go for a war. I know the bad guy is Saddam, but you have to take him out if you can, but you cannot hurt civilians. Yeah. So that's that's a bad thing to do. Killing innocent people is not a good thing to do. Oh, oh. I have to fight. You have two signs? Yeah. Did you make that one? I made both these signs. And then our friend Jill made oh. things. She let me carry her sign. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a good sign. Do you think Bush sucks? What's that? Do you think Bush sucks? I think so. I think 
No more! No more! No more! No more! No more! Well, so while we were away, or while you were away watching those, uh, those peace rallies, we kind of came up with another idea, a possibility of how to host this show. A little bit different, sort of different from the di first uh, segment uh, with us sitting together. Um, you might call this one the edit time split screen conversation. All right, so as you can see, I have paused the man, and I now have an opportunity, instead of trying to respond in real time to this guy who, you know, isn't really here and who I can't really, and I'm not really having a conversation with him. Instead, I'm able to carefully collect my thoughts and record them. And, and the idea is that maybe this way we can more closely approximate um, a real conversation, except not really. So um, with that in mind, uh, you know, B, did you have any, uh, you obviously attended some other peace rallies, which we're going to see next. Did you see anything at these uh, peace rallies that I attended that were in any way um, compelling to you? No, Jay, I, I didn't find anything at your uh, so-called peace rally to be compelling. You call that a peace rally? Well, so uh, I guess uh, we should perhaps move on to our next segment here in which we uh, visit a peace rally that you attended. Do you want to give us any context to this event? All right, yeah, this is a peace rally. Actually, took place in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh -huh, I think it pretty much speaks for itself. But keep your eyes peeled for the ugly Americans. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see it since, of course, I still can't hear a word you're saying. I'm actually just still sitting here alone in my living room, um, trying to have a conversation with a chair that's sitting over there um, to kind of in place of being, but it's not really there. So, anyway, we'll try to figure this out. In the meantime, check out this peace rally in New Orleans. this editor B. Hey, this, this is Jay. How's it going? All right. And you? I'm doing quite well. Well, how about that, uh, how about that video of uh, the peace rally in New Orleans? Well, I thought it was pretty amazing. Um, obviously, uh, we're um, having to use the telephone here because uh, you're not in the room with me. Um, where are you, actually? I'm, I'm actually in the back of my house. Oh, okay. So you're outside. I'm sitting outside. Yeah, it's pushing 80. Really? The problem is that uh, since we don't have any fancy microphones, right? I, do you have a microphone on? I, I do, actually. It's sitting on the floor. I'll, I'll even pick it up and show it to the viewing public. It's like, is it a lavalier mic? No. On the floor? No, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a stereo um, condenser microphone that, uh, that I picked up at a pawn shop. Wow, so we're going to be able to hear your voice really well. Yeah, yeah. Miraculously good. 
Uh, on the other hand, you probably won't be able to hear me at all. Really? Why is that? Well, because I don't have a microphone. I'm just, you know, we, we're just using the, the mic that's built into the camera. Oh. And, of course, the camera's sitting over there. Yeah. Quite some distance from me. But if I scream really loud, you could hear me. But, but then, you know, I blow you out there on the telephone. Yeah. Well, but through the miracle of uh, digital technology, you can make my voice sound like all sorts of weird things. Like, like for example, example, what, what you're, you're doing, doing right now. now. Yeah, that well, was pretty weird. Yeah. Well, I just, I feel kind of, you know... Con cramped up and constrained here on this just one half of the screen. Yeah. The fact that, you know, like I said, I don't have a microphone and the camera has to be sitting all the way over there mm -hmm. and that you probably can't hear me. Yeah. Plus the fact that, you know, I'm kind of a big guy. I need more of, of, of the screen here. I mean, you're not really here. It, it, yeah, exactly. In fact, yeah. if I was to just move the video uh, thing over, mm -hmm. you can see that I'm actually talking to a big potted plant. Really? You know, so am I, actually. Really? Yeah. But in the meantime, um, we should uh, uh, perhaps take a look at this next video footage. This is some footage that we shot at the Super Walmart here in, in uh, uh, western Montana. Day and I and Lincoln went over there um, and... Uh, well, now you were asking questions about the war, though. This is still exactly. related to the theme that we've been developing here, right. which is this crisis, not yeah. only between, you know, in our lives, but mm -hmm. in the lives really of the entire country yeah. and the world. Exactly. Damn, so why did you go to the Walmart to talk about war? Well, you know, I figured, uh, you know, Walmart, is, there are Walmarts all over the country. Um, there's probably one in, in uh, New Orleans. Um, don't even go there. Probably 50 of them in New Orleans, I don't know. But, um, but uh, we figured that, you know, if we went over there, we'd get kind of a cross-section of uh, the Amer American demographic populace. Um, we talked to some kids, we talked to some older people. So you went to Walmart to take the pulse of America. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Maybe you can roll that footage, B. Right on. So we're here at the uh, Super Walmart here in Missoula, Montana. You know, there are Super Walmarts all over America. And we figured this would be a good place to get the, um, the opinions of, you know, kind of ordinary Walmart shopping Americans on uh, what they think about this war thing. It's good if we can get the oil fields, but if we can't, I don't think it's worth it. I think we're not, not taking care of the United States. You know, I think we ought to worry about our own country before we start. The, the United States, States thinks they need to dip their nose in everybody else's business. Drop a bomb and get it over with. They're a waste of space. A bunch of ragheads anyways. <laughs> Lots of people died, that'd suck. I think it'd be better if we didn't have one. If we have to. Yeah. I guess we have to. I, I don't really, I don't know what I think. I don't think there, there should be a war with Iraq. I think that uh, there's no reason for a war with Iraq. Uh, I don't know. There's enough things going on within our own country to, um, to put uh, government funding into. I don't think it's a really good idea. We just don't have that much to go to war with them about. Do you, do you recognize Iraq on here, on this map? We're it's doing studying. this in social studies. Our social studies teacher yeah. is making us do this. I don't know. Okay, well, why don't you try the other map, the second one? Because that was actually the Great Lakes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it didn't look any. <laughs> hey, that's awfully close. They're next door neighbors. It's that one? one? Yep, that's uh, the one. Can you locate Iraq then on there? There's it's Wisconsin. There. It's not on there. Okay, good job. <laughs> <laughs> but how about this one? That one? Yeah. yeah. I'm just getting into geography. I'm just mm -hmm. a fifth grader. Uh, I don't know. Geography? No, definitely not that. <laughs> I know a little more than that. <laughs> okay, that's Kuwait. I think Iraq is right there, maybe? Close. Close. That's its smaller neighbor. Is that Iran? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, so Iraq's right there. Yes. Okay. Okay, we have a quiz for you. Okay. Can you uh, locate Iraq on this map? Uh, Yeah, isn't it right there? Where's that? Can you point? I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Right there. Is that in okay. Iraq? Are you in favor of bombing Wisconsin? Well, you know, there are some reasons to bomb Wisconsin. That stinky cheese. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my God. Do we really need all that cheese production? And besides those people that wear the blocks of cheese on their heads? Exactly. Goodness, what is that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen, sister. Bomb Wisconsin. Bomb Wisconsin. Bomb Wisconsin. Yeah, we probably shouldn't be um, bombing anything. That's yeah. my opinion. So that's interesting that you guys are um, the Walmart parking lot asking people. Well, we figured, that's you know. Good.
Uh, hello? Hey, Jay, it's Pete. Hey, it is Jay, although I'm almost ashamed to admit it. <laughs> well, um... Did you see that video? Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> Actually, I haven't seen the video yet, but you've sent <sighs> it to me, but I haven't seen it. So. Yeah, well, um, as, uh, as you'll soon discover, here I was talking to all those people trying to be the voice of authority on uh, this map that we were showing people of Iraq. Yeah. And I was pointing out the wrong goddamn country myself. Well, you know, I find your ignorance a little less alarming because, after all, you're not saying, let's go bomb the hell out of all those people. Yeah, I, I've actually gone outside now. I'm in this very thin shirt just to show my personal fortitude. Despite the uh, the chilly temperature, I don't know. Good. Yeah, you can't really see my breath. It's not that cold. I am also wearing a thin shirt. Really? To show my fortitude. Yeah. But I do like this uh, mode of communication just a little bit better. Yeah, um, exactly. You know what I I'm like I'm able about to walk it? around, stretch my legs. Yes, I, I like the room. I, I've got a little more real estate here, so to speak. Yeah. You know, the whole the whole screen. But um, but what I really like about it is is that I'm closer to the camera. Yeah, exactly. It, it's more intimate, but you know, um, you know, all you see is my big head. Right. There's that. Um, don't you have one of those fancy phone headsets too? Yeah, I do. I've got. I'm able to use um, one hand for the camera and uh, my other hand just for gesticulating. And you know, here I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm using just one. You know, regular old cordless phone. Uh huh. As you can see. Uh, yeah. Well, you can't see, but you well, know, yeah. as you, the viewer, can see. I just don't understand why. You, and you've got the microphone that you had in the previous, you know, that you showed us before. Yeah. You have all the technology. Why don't I yeah. have this technology? Well, it's because um, for a little while there, I was actually making some decent. Uh, Jack, decent Jack, decent Jack, 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 decent Jack, doing some uh, some writing. We talked about that in the last episode. Haven't been making much money, but but uh, since then, but. Uh, um, back then, I bought a bunch of cool shit, um, mostly for uh, making music. Um, back to this but, idea of, um, you know, war and bombing the hell out of people and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I have a modest proposal of my own. What's that? That is to bomb Walmart, not Iraq. Hey, now there you go. There's an idea. I went and I presented that idea to uh, at a, an anti-war rally. I heard that you were in the newspaper for doing this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'll show that picture right now. There's, uh, I got my picture in the paper of the local daily, the Times Picayune. Yeah. Because. Um, Picayune? Picayune. What the fuck's a Picayune? You know what a Picayune is? Are, are we going to have to have yet another vocabulary word? Apparently so. Okay, well, Picayune is something. Uh, uh, Picayune means small and uh, of no significance. Oh, of course. So, hence the newspaper. That's the perfect name for a newspaper, isn't it? The yeah, Times exactly. I, so, my, my photo, as you see there, is in the Times Picayune. Uh, uh -huh. with the, I put a little sign on, on my camera that said, Bomb Walmart. This video is pe people's reactions to that idea. Bomb Walmart? Well, um, I'm, I'm very anxious to see this video footage. And uh, maybe um, we should stop babbling our mouths and let other people do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm against violence in general, but I'm also against Walmart. <laughs> I say bomb the fuck out of it, as long as I don't complain. Bombing Walmart. Well, as long as it's not in Iraq. <laughs> Seems very appropriate. Bomb Walmart. <laughs> what do you think of that? Uh, that's interesting. I'm not sure if I'm in agreement, but hey. Can we get the people out of them first? Sounds like a good idea to me. Yes, I'm, I'm definitely in favor of that. Uh, officially, I can't say that I would support anything like that. I don't think we should bomb anybody. All right. I'm here to say no bombing at all. No bombing. They sold me a Sony, a Sony uh, CD player made in People's Republic of China that was a perfect lemon. So I'm going to be mixing a Napoleon. This is, of course, named after one of the most uh, famous or infamous conquerors in history. The first thing that you'll need is one of these. This is a cocktail mixer. I've chosen this one because it's kind of reminiscent of a missile. Missiles are kind of reminiscent of penises, and Napoleon was known as a, one of the greatest dicks in history. So you want to add some ice to this, fill it up a little bit. Um, you'll notice that we've got a bottle here that has a little symbol on there that's you know, it's kind of reminiscent of the Salvation Army symbol. All imperialist bastards think or seem to, you know, kind of cloak their uh, rhetoric in this kind of moralistic, you know, we're going to save the world from evil kind of thing, which of course is George Bush's ploy. 
So um, we'll pour a couple ounces of this in here. And then the next thing you want to add, some Dubonnet Rouge. And you know, want to put about a half an ounce of that in here. The last thing that you're going to add to this drink is some Grand Marnier. This is not just some kind of effect. This is a really small bottle. Napoleon, maybe his whole deal was he was just kind of pissed off about being short and he had to prove something. Um, and you know, so many imperialist bastards like him uh, feel like they have something to prove. They got to get their point across to the world. They got to prove that they're a man. And then shake it. Now you'll notice that it gets really cold and your hand freezes to it. <laughs> Just kidding. Strain the drink into uh, this fine Napoleon concoction into a glass. It's kind of an odd color, isn't it? It smells kind of disgusting. Wow, you know, it's, it kind of seems like a battle between conflicting flavors, and um, all of them are losing. Well, so much for all of that. I guess it's about time to wrap up this TV show. This is Editor B with the final segment and a final thought for you. As you obviously know, by the time you see this, the war is over now, and yet, the crisis continues. It seems that for the foreseeable future, if we're not at war with some country, we'll either be preparing for war or recovering from the last war, so unfortunately, uh, the stuff you've seen in this program may remain all too relevant. In any event, our personal crisis also continues. We still don't know how to make this TV show on opposite ends of the country. Uh, we tried some different things. You know, some of them had some advantages, but uh, really, we still got to experiment around. We still don't know what the hell we're doing. But uh, if you have any idea what you're doing, if you'd like to contribute video to this show or just drop us a line or something like that, you can contact us via our website, rocks.com, or uh, you can uh, actually uh, just send us uh, a regular old-fashioned letter at the address there that you see on your screen. So until next time, um, I guess... Uh, let's just keep our fingers crossed and hope this crisis doesn't reach nuclear proportions. Growing up, I used to worry about the day they dropped the bomb. Blow up my house, my dad and my mom. Every time the sky would turn a funny shade of green. I thought they dropped the bomb. Then the media told us not to worry anymore. That there wasn't any threat of a nuclear war. And everybody just forgot. Everybody just forgot about it. I remember if I thought too much about it, I'd get real scared. And now I'm glad that they told me not what to. What you care. gotta keep in mind is that all the bombs are still there. I bet one day we'll find out where we were so, so scared. scared.